Welcome everyone to another amazing video. This one is again conservation of momentum, but these are multi-part conservation of momentum problems, so they will definitely connect to previous topics. As a general problem-solving strategy, I would highly recommend reading the problem a couple times through. Read it the whole way through. Don't start looking for numbers and writing things down. Just read it to get a feel for what's going on in the problem. Then you want to focus on the separate parts of the problem and the topics that will be incorporated into the problem. Maybe there's a reaction time, which means constant velocity. Maybe there's a skid. You can use energy or you can use dynamics and kinematics. Maybe there's an incline. Again, energy or or uh, dynamics and kinematics. Maybe there's projectile motion. Maybe there's circular motion. But try and focus on the different parts and what topics they connect to. I would definitely consider drawing a picture of the scenario as we've always done and labeling as much as you can. And remember, we've done this so many times. We've, we've focused on multi-part problems through the entire year and the final velocity from one part becomes the initial velocity of the next part. So the only thing to do is start with a problem. So here we have a 10 kilogram block sliding down an incline and at the bottom of the incline there's a perfectly inelastic collision with an initial, initially stationary object which is resting on a horizontal surface. After the collision they slide to a stop over a distance along this horizontal surface. And the question is asking for the coefficient of friction between the blocks and the surface. Again, feel free to pause the video at this time. What I would really suggest is pause the video, write down the problem, see if you can identify the parts on their own, and see if you can solve the problem instead of watching me solve it in a video. So highly recommending you give this a shot. Why don't you pause the video now? Welcome back if you paused it. For those that didn't, that was like a two-second delay, but you should have tried it. So anyway, as recommended, I would start with a picture. So we have an incline and then a long frictionless surface. Initially, the two masses are at rest. Object A will slide down the incline, and the VF of part one, which is the incline, becomes VI for the collision, which is part two. After the collision, they are connected together because it is a perfectly inelastic collision. They slide to a stop over a distance. So. Part one is simply the incline. Part two is the collision. And part three is the skid. So starting with the incline, I've chosen to use energy. You can, of course, use dynamics and kinematics. I find energy to be easier since we just finished that topic. So the object starts at the top of the incline with potential energy and it ends at the bottom of the incline with kinetic energy and this this is the moment before the collision with B so it's up to that moment. Substituting in our math we have mgh equals one half mv squared where the mass divides out and substituting in our numbers we get that the final velocity is 4.13 meters per second. On to part two which is the collision. Anytime there is a collision you have to do conservation of momentum so we start with that math rep. Substituting in our numbers, you see here that the VF from part one, the 4.13 meters per second, becomes the VI for mass A in part two. We have enough information here that we can solve for the final velocity of the two objects stuck together, which is 2.75 meters per second. And then on to part three, where again, you can choose to use energy or dynamics and kinematics, whichever you choose. I've chosen energy, where the two masses are moving together initially, and again, this is the moment right after the collision. Then they end with no energy, so that must have been negative work done. Here we have 1 of mv squared, and the work done by friction, where friction is mu times the normal, and the normal, in this case, on a horizontal surface, is mg. Again, the mass will divide out of this one. Substituting in our numbers, the only thing we don't know is mu. You will notice that the 2.75, the VF from part 2, has become VI for part 3. And we're left that mu is 0 0.19. Just want to remind you one more time, 
the connections between the parts. The VF for part 1 becomes VI for part 2, and the VF for part 2 becomes VI for part 3. So this problem looks a little long. I'm sure you're going to want to pause it, but again, I would recommend reading it a few times. I'm not going to read it to you because I don't want to put you to sleep while watching a video, but read it a few times. See if you can identify the parts, draw a picture, and see if you can solve it on your own. Again, remembering that the VF for part one becomes the VI for part two, and so on. I highly doubt that you paused it. Maybe you did, maybe you didn't. I hope you gave it a shot. We'll see if you got it right if you tried. So I'm drawing a picture here of our mass initially up against a compressed spring. And you can see mass B is waiting over on the other side. So the mass is shot across the horizontal surface where there is friction. And we are concerned with the final velocity right before the collision. Then they have an elastic collision, or excuse me, inelastic collision where they bounce off each other. So I've just drawn that as a second picture. The final velocity for that part after the collision becomes initial for part three, which happens to be projectile motion. So part one is a spring launch with friction. This is obviously energy for us. Part two is an inelastic collision, meaning conservation of momentum. And part three is horizontal projectile motion. Again, these topics will connect to previous topics, so it's a good review for the midterm. Starting with part one. We have that the spring potential energy minus the work done by friction as it slides along the surface is equal to the final kinetic energy. Substituting in our math, again, friction being mu mg, where mg is equal to the normal. Mass does not divide out here. Be careful. There's not a mass in every term. Substituting in our numbers, you'll notice we actually have two unknowns. We don't know delta x, and we don't know vf. Don't panic, it is a multi-part problem. If you've organized it, you know that you should move on to part two, see if that gets you anywhere. So for the inelastic collision, collision meaning conservation of momentum, we set up our conservation of momentum math rep, substitute in our numbers, and again, you will notice that we have two unknowns. Please be careful here with the signs as object A bounces back. So that is a negative velocity as it bounces back. Look out for those words in problems. So here we can't do anything either. Time to move on to horizontal projectile motion. Reminder, you may want to set up the xy chart. Since it's horizontal, the initial velocity in the y-axis is 0. Old school, we use math rep number 3 to find the time of flight in the air. Solving for time, we get time is 1.2 seconds. And from that, we go to math rep 1, where we can find the initial velocity in the x, which is 2.08 meters per second. That initial velocity of part 3 is equal to the final velocity from part 2. And when we substitute that in, we can actually find the initial velocity of object A from part 2, which is 0.25 meters per second. We can then work backwards from there, where the initial from part 2 is the final from part 1. From here, we can solve for delta x, which is 0.2 meters. For some of you, this problem may have seemed a little tougher, simply because you had to work backwards. But please remember to read the problem a few times through, identify the different topics involved in the problem, get organized with your work, if part one does not get what you get you anywhere, then move on to part two. And if part two doesn't get you anywhere, move on to part three until you can solve for something that you can use. As always, the VF from one part becomes the initial velocity for the next part, or in reverse, the initial part, the initial velocity, excuse me, for the next part becomes the VF for the previous part. We will work on some more problems over the next two days similar to this, in which we incorporate previous topics in multi-part problems connected to conservation of momentum.